So, so um, I'm really just going to summarize pretty quickly my, my pre-circulated paper um, that I think you can download from, from Middle Savagery or whatever. I, um, I, I apologize in advance for it being a, a little bit self, self-referential. Um, I, I've been working over the last uh, few years on ideas that um, think first about uh, practice. Uh, I'm interested in digital practices, but really digital practices on, and I don't really like this, this term, but I'll use it anyway, the edge of the trowel, like in, 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 in the field, like in that particular space, that particular interpretive space. Uh, and I, I became interested in, in, in performativity and the way in which we improvise, and, and I was interested in, in thinking about that in terms of, of punk rock and the way in which you know punk rock creates this kind of performative space that has, on the one hand, certain rules that dictate what it is, but on the other hand, has opportunities for egalitarianism, radical freedom, whatever. Um, and so that was kind of my point of departure in the way in which I became, um, I do digital stuff, first off, but I've become very anxious, which I think is profoundly human, not transhuman emotion, uh, about the way in which um, our, our, our digital world is transforming that, that practice on the, uh, at the edge of the trial. I'm actually a survey archaeologist. I don't really, I hate digging. I'm a terrible excavator, so I say on the edge of the trowel, and I'm just like totally lying to all you people. Like, really what I'm talking about is like walking through a field with a clicker, right? Which for some of you may be only kind of marginally archaeology to begin with, but anyway. So I became very concerned about the way in which digital practices affect that. This drove me back to read, uh, and this is kind of the second part of my, my little paper, um, drove me to two mid-century thinkers. They're both Christian anarchists. They're both burdened with tremendous problems. Uh, and I'm aware of all, all of those problems. Uh, one, one is, one is a, a cat called Jacques Ellul, and he writes about um, efficiency. And he's very concerned about the way in which efficiency has come to dominate uh, the, 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 the justifications for all practices in modern society, that everything we do is driven by this kind of relentless drip of efficiency um, that we're always, and I, I don't know if, if y'all are like this, I am, but like when I get up in the morning, I mean, I'm not quite Steve Jobs or something, but when I get up in the morning, like I, the last thing I do when I get out of bed is plan what I'm going to wear. And I think about my lecture in the shower, like I'm never just doing one thing, because I have this, my, my father's German might be the issue, but anyway, I have this like co- constant, constant push of efficiency. Uh, and, and I think that, that shapes practice and it's really shaped the way in which we at least rhetorically approach arguments for digital uh, uh, practices, right? That digital practices, at least rhetorically, um, in, in terms of practice in the field, right? My very narrow sliver of the world is almost always we can do this more accurately, we can do this more efficiently, we can do this more quickly, and then we, we can have, I don't know, m- maybe maybe more days off. Actually, that's not ever the case. It's We can do more, we can dig more, whatever. Um, I'm also um, interested in, in, in Ivan Illich, who I think is, is enjoying a little bit of a resurgence in a very small, probably quite odd part of the world. Um, and Illich is another one of these Christian anarchists. And you know, he, he, he worries about m- modernity undermining our ideas of conviviality, which for, for him is, that, is that, that, that those those radical spaces where individual ideas uh, emerge from conversation and, and engagement. Um, part of the reason I don't, don't use PowerPoints, I've stopped using PowerPoints, is because I think they kind of... Um, first off, they take a long time, <laughs> and uh, I, I didn't have time to do them. Uh, but the second thing is, uh, they tend to distract people from what you're saying, because you're staring at some thing. And, and I'm sure many of you are still staring at the white screen, but that's fine. <laughs> I can't control that. But on the other hand, uh, there, there's this kind of spirit of conviviality that Illich it, it, uh, approaches. And so, and convivi- conviviality to him is, is one of the things that organize society. And I think, I think Alil would have argued the same, argue in different ways the same thing. And so the, the final part of it, and so, oh, this was all part of this, this larger kind of agglomeration of ideas, which I term slow archaeology, like getting back to those moments of conviviality in the field. So we're not all looking down at our iPads or filling out our form, our context form, our survey form, that this doesn't become the driving thing that, that the first step of engagement when we should be really engaging our colleagues and what we're seeing on the ground, but instead we're actually engaging a damn form. And I know everyone doesn't do this, but I do think that there is an element of this in almost all of our practice that's only being pushed further by our, by, by, by our, 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 um, uh, the affordances offered by our digital tools. And then the final part, and I promise I'll be done, is uh, I, I, became, um, I, I, became, I, I became interested in the way in which these things uh, uh, shape ontology, right? And I, and I began reading people like Manuel de Landa, but in, more, more, more importantly, I, I read a, a, little, a book on, on logistics by Deborah Cohen. She's, she's not an archaeologist. Um, it's called The Deadly Life of Logistics. And I began to realize that the transformation that's happening in 
um, archaeological practices, our shift from, from the assembly line, right? So efficiency was largely funneled in this assembly line, which begins at the trench or the survey unit and ends in the monograph or book or report or gray, whatever, right? Like that is the process. To one that, that um, because digital tools have tended to fragment knowledge um, at the edge of the, the, the trow or at the, in the field, allows us this granularity. It also allows us to have this transportability, right? And so the model for archaeology um, has shifted, particularly in the last 20 years, from, uh, from, from, from one driven by this linear assembly line that's uh, very hierarchical and very well organized to one um, that's driven by, by logistics, which is increasingly mediated by digital tool, tools. So this is something that comes along to, to transhumanism, that, that, that digital practice becomes increasingly transhuman because we're, we're increasingly engaged with the, not, not simply the affordances of the tools we choose to use, but part of the reason I have PowerPoints is I, I put together some. I just like the Wi-Fi in my apartment or the hotel I was in here was terrible. And I was like, ah, screw it. I'm not going to do these, right? So this entire network of, of things that connected the way in which we get some very simple piece of an archaeological talk is, is interrupted, right? But about how many, I'm sure many of us, when we're in the field, we run into those same things. And, and, and it's not just in the field. It's when we're transporting our data from, from our trench or survey unit all the way back home, uh, in my case, to the center, center of the US, uh, when we're sharing it with a colleague who is uh, in another continent, um, that, we, that we've begun to create a, a, a destructured uh, a, a, an assemblage, right? This, this vast assemblage um, that is logistics. That, and logistics, uh, I was walking through one of the neighborhoods down here, um, are, are, has a logic of its own. And, this, and the logic of its own has recently come under some, I think, fairly compelling critiques. I mean, after, after all, the, the beauty of logistics is the thing that drives forward the potential of Uber, the potential of Airbnb, the potential of, of, of us to export um, a kind of neoliberal regime of, 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 of economy and utility. Um, that, that may not be uh, Jacques Lou's efficiency, but might be actually something something much more pernicious. So while, while um, Ruth's talk was, was uplifting mine, uh, I'm, I'm afraid kind of ends in, in this sort of cul-de-sac of anxiety and dread. <laughs> that, that not only am I stuck doing this stuff, maybe for the rest of my life, but I'm, I'm somehow complicit by, by having used these tools. Like, uh, you know, I, I have a little notebook, which is you know, slightly better than my iPhone sitting on my, my book. <laughs> Thank you.